Hi there, this is Mark Edelman, speech-language pathologist, and welcome to the teaching of talking. You know, there are a number of terms in the field of speech therapy that uh, sometimes people get confused, and I'd like to just uh, discuss the major terms that are used, especially with people who are non-professionals. Okay, so the first one is the word speech. And uh, speech is a really a non-technical word. It's, it's a word that we all know. It's a word that most of us engage in. And it is the ability to express words and articulate the words. So speech is the ability to say words and articulate them. Now articulation is the process of forming the sounds with the tongue and the lips. Now if the tongue and the lips are having difficulty moving, or if the person with aphasia or apraxia has this type of problem, they might have difficulty articulating or moving the tongue and the lips voluntarily. And if they have difficulty moving the tongue and the lips and the throat, then what will happen is the articulation will not be accurate. And so far, and, and therefore the sounds that make up the words will be said incorrectly. And if the sounds are incorrect, then the words will not come out clearly. And if the words do not come out clearly, then there's a problem. <laughs> and the problem is that the person will have likely have difficulty being understood by others because the sounds of the words are not accurate. And so therefore, the person who's listening, the person who's receiving the message cannot get the message and cannot understand it because it is what we call unintelligible. And unintelligible is that when you say a word and the other person doesn't know what you just said, then it's unintelligible. And quite often, people with aphasia or apraxia, when they speak with others, will say some words that the other person won't understand and the other person who doesn't understand will do either two things. They'll either pretend that they understood what was said, or they will ask the person to repeat it. Now, in both situations, the person with aphasia or apraxia, if they're asked to repeat themselves often, then speech becomes frustrating. It becomes not fun. It becomes a task to talk to others. Okay, so the definition now of speech is the ability to articulate, articulate the sounds of speech to form words. And that's what speech is. And a lot of people who go to speech therapy practice saying words. They practice articulation. They practice making their sounds accurately. And they practice saying words or word pairs or phrases or sentences. So that's what speech is. It's a process. It's a process of articulation, which happens here, which formulates the word. And, and if the articulation is accurate here, then people will understand the words that come out of the person's mouth. Okay, so that's speech. Then there is a definition of the word talking. <laughs> Excuse me. And talking is the ability to interact with each other. It's the ability to engage in speech. 
It is the ability to engage in speech in a discussion. Now, discussion, we all know, uh, a discussion is something that goes on between two people. Now, you can discuss lots of things. You can discuss the weather. You can discuss what you want to have for dinner. You can discuss where you want to go. You can discuss something that you like. You can discuss something that you don't like. You can discuss the answer to a problem. You can make plans. You can set goals. And you can talk with another person about what so. Now, every day, Malka and I have a discussion. We go outside, and if the weather's nice especially, and we sit uh, on the patio, and we discuss what we want to do, where we want to go, when we, when we want to go there, what we'll need to do in order to make that happen. So a discussion involves planning, setting goals, uh, and deciding and making decisions. And so talking is a very, very important task because without talking, you have no discussion. Without discussion, you have no interaction with another person. Now, that's what we stress um, in the teaching of talking method. From the very, very beginning, we do our very best to get the person talking. Now, a lot of therapists will spend a lot of time on speech and sounds and saying words, um, and a lot of it is out of context. It doesn't relate to a discussion. It doesn't relate to an interaction. And that's why we call the teaching of talking the teaching of talking, because from the very get-go, we work on helping people talk. And when you talk, as we've discussed, you formulate the sounds, you formulate the words, and then you speak with another person. You have a discussion. And the discussion is a way to plan, a way to express your thoughts to another person, have them express their thoughts to you. And it's extremely critical to be able to have discussions with people because a discussion is what's so rich about living and communicating with another person. And the discussion also helps with the formulation of plans, of ideas, and how one is going to live their life. Now, finally, there's something called a conversation. And the conversation is what we also do with the teaching of talking. A conversation takes place between two people. It's a talk between two people. It's a sharing of ideas between two people. And uh, it's very critical in our society today. And it's very critical in terms of relationships. Now, relationships are based on communication. And the better the communication, the better the relationship usually. I can't tell you how many times I've come into contact with people who have very difficult relationships because either one of them doesn't communicate very well. And even the people who can talk and who can converse, some of them don't talk. <laughs> they just don't talk very much. And if they don't talk very much, then there's no shared ideas. There's no sharing of the person. There's no sharing of their ideas, their wants, their dreams, their aspirations. And that's why we consider the teaching of talking approach to aphasia so very important because it teaches the caregiver how to interact, how to talk, how to converse, how to discuss things with the person who has aphasia. Now, in many cases where family members or spouses do not know how to do this, there's usually a lot of anger 
There's usually a lot of upset. There's usually a lot of frustration. There's usually a lot of avoidance. And that's no way to have a relationship. In fact, quite often in the literature, when I read about spouses of people with aphasia, one of the first things that they say is, I wish I had my Johnny back, or I wish I had my Dennis back, or I wish I had my husband back, or I wish I had my wife back. Because in a way, they're not there anymore. They're not there anymore because they're not talking. They're not conversing. They're not discussing. They're not sharing. They're not planning with you. They're not doing the things that enrich a relationship. And one of the things that enriches a relationship is the ability to talk, the ability to converse, and the ability to interact. And that's what we consider so very, very important with the teaching of talking method for those with aphasia. This is Mark Edelman, and we're having a uh, a meeting in Las Vegas, February 24th, 25th, and 26th. So if you're a caregiver or a therapist, we're accepting 10 applications, and that's all for the Teaching of Talking intensive three-day meeting where I teach you about conversation, about speaking, about interacting, about discussion. And we start that from the very, very beginning of therapy, from the very, very beginning of therapy for most. And this is a, 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 a very fun and interactive method because we don't sit down and we don't use any flashcards or iPads or anything like that. We use the interaction between two people. And that's what a discussion is. That's what talking is. It's an interaction between two people. So we don't want to muddy up the waters with flashcards and notebooks and iPads and all that, because that's not talking. That's not interacting. That's not conversing. And if you want to get better at conversing, and if the person with aphasia wishes to be able to converse and discuss <clears throat> and relate to another person, then it's very important for the person at home or a family member to learn the teaching of talking method and to apply it throughout the day in all interactions. Now, if you'd like some more information about this, underneath the video are a bunch of links which will help you, if you uh, put your mouse on them and click, they'll take you either to our website or if you want to sign up to get our emails or if you want information about the upcoming seminar, which uh, the deadline to register is this coming Thursday, February 20th. And if you've missed it, we'll be having other seminars. We'll be having also a seminar um, online, and um, you can uh, purchase the book of the Teaching of Talking. And we're also finishing up right now another book called Apraxia, The Teaching of Talking, and Dealing with Speaking Clarity. Because if you have apraxia, then you have to deal with the apraxia first because you have to be able to say words clearly so that people will understand you. And so for some, that's the first step. <clears throat> so aphasia and apraxia are very complex subjects. And don't let anybody try and fool you and tell you to sing happy birthday or to uh, do certain things. The best person to speak to about how to help your loved one with aphasia or apraxia is an expert speech language pathologist who's had the experience, who knows aphasia, who knows receptive aphasia and expressive aphasia, and will teach you about that and will teach you the steps that you need to use with your particular person who's got aphasia. Because all phases are different and there's no one tool that cures all and it's not a quick fix, so just remember that. So if you'd like to contact us, our email is down below, our website is down below. If you wanna find out about coming to Las Vegas, information about that is below. And if you do wanna to come to Las Vegas, you better hurry up 
and contact us and let us know that you're interested in coming. So this is Mark Edelman, speech-language pathologist. If you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. You know, it's one of those. And uh, if you'd like to receive other YouTubes, there's a, a, a bell there that you can click on to subscribe. And uh, make sure you're on our mailing list because we have a number of things going on. We have uh, sales on many of our materials that we have to teach you how to help your loved one talk better, speak better, converse better, discuss better, and uh, con uh, converse with other people. And uh, when you have people to the house, like your family or friends, they'll be able to interact uh, in the conversation. They won't be left out because it's frustrating to be left out of things. So this is Mark Edelman. Have a great day today and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye now.